My favorite mode so far is called Loop on Gate High. If we hit that, initially nothing is going to sound any different. But let's go back to our editor for a second. Let's add one more thing here. We have these loop in and out creation markers. So this is where things get kind of interesting. It, it, it's really useful on like long sustaining notes or if you, if you have an exact uh, set of a loop or like a, a rhythmic loop or something, you can get some really interesting things happening. Um, I'm gonna go add, add uh, loop in. And look, it's created like a new kind of thing we haven't seen before. And I'm gonna pick a loop out point. Let's say right here. So now we have this weird thing which indicates uh, a loop. And I guess it's not weird, it's just new because we haven't seen it before. And what that uh, loop on high means, if I hit this key, oh, let's make sure I'm on the right slice. If I hold this key down, it's gonna loop this section until I let go. So if I make this a little bit longer, let's put the loop out right there. <laughs> let's make it even a little bit longer. If I really go in there and, and finesse this, it'll be a pretty tight loop, but. So that's another behavior. So if you're trying to make like a, a cool sustained instrument, but you want to repeat a section of the sample, no problem. You can just add a loop point here. And every single one of these slices can have its own loop markers. So this second slice, I can create a loop in here. I can create a loop out there. And you know what, I'll do it on the third one as well. I'll make this really tight. This might sound a little ridiculous. We'll see what happens. So here's my three things. I'm gonna go on follow so we can see what's happening. Switch slices. <laughs> I love how fast the refresh is on the screen. It's kind of awesome. Uh, you can refine this a little bit if uh, you go into the controls uh, and you turn up the fades. You can sort of smooth it out a little bit. But I'd recommend uh, just make a better edit, or make a better loop edit. <laughs> but based on this looping, you can get some really interesting sounds happening that are significantly longer than what your original slice sample was. All while you still have full control over the speed. So if you're building some really weird drones. <laughs> so if that was like an interesting acoustic instrument or something, or maybe a, a chunk of a drum loop, you can get some really neat things happening. Uh, last but not least within this editor, I won't really get into it today too much. Um, if we go back to our slices, um, instead of manually defining slices, I'm just going to erase these slices. I'm going to go minus slice, minus slice, minus slice. And turn the volume down. If we go to our menu, we do have some uh, slice on grid functionality. So you can add a whole bunch of slices automatically, uh, which is pretty good. You know, instead of having to manually define a whole bunch of things, you can just add a whole bunch of slices. And uh, then this sample's chopped up and you can address all of them. So let's say I wanted this. I could hit enter. We have all these slices. These could all still have individual loop points, but they're pretty small. But now, if I, uh, if I trigger these and I go up my mod wheel, it's grabbing a whole bunch of different slices within this menu. And where it gets really interesting sonically is instead of a manual source, if you had like a sample and hold with like a white or pink noise here, or 
like a sine wave or like some weird random source, like another audio file in the sample player, you'll get like some pretty erratic kind of things happening here. Like if I put a noise source in here, it's gonna be a little too fast, but let's just see what happens. Uh, basically it's totally random. Every time I hit a key, it's just gonna be a different chunk of that file. So that would be more useful if there was no silence between all these waves, uh, between these three blobs. But uh, you can see where you could go with this. Um, great for pads, uh, great for rhythmic. Um, if you if you slice up a loop, a loop every beat or sub beat or sixteenth or whatever, um, and then you re you re trigger the gate, you can get some really insane things happening. Um, you know, if I instead of using my keyboard, if I had like a sine wave here instead pinging that gate. It's sort of endless what you could do here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> we got some weird things happening. So my slices I've chosen are way too small, but I could slow this down. But then I guess, you know, they're still too small. So it's not really helping us. You know what? I think I'll do another video for this because I am getting kind of tired. I've had a long day. Uh, so you know what? I'll make another full-fledged video on just the sample slicer that uh, is more practical. So anyway, I hope um, just the overall layout of the menus is helpful because that's the biggest change. Um, um, and on top of that, there's a whole bunch of new units, which I'll eventually get into. So I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, sorry it's taken so long to make these, but uh, I think I'm on track again. So uh, until the next video. Cheers, everybody. Bye.